doing on the floor in the middle of the night? As soon as I wake up, I'll tell you. It's those people next door again. Somebody ought to have a talk with them. What did you say? I said... I said somebody ought to have a talk with that guy next door. Really tell him off. If he doesn't like it, he can get out of the neighborhood. I agree. And I want you to tell him that first thing in the morning. Me? Why me? You're the one with the violent temper, not me. <laughs> Poor Ed. That noise must be scaring him to death. Those people next door are not normal human beings. They're savages. <laughs> Get you up, huh? Twelve o'clock. He said he'd be home early. He knows how it worries me when he stays out late. Uh-oh. Ed, you said you'd be home at ten. What time is it? Silly question. You know an animal can't tell time. An animal that can talk can tell time. Ever see a parrot with a wristwatch? Ed, you know, I don't mind you spending an evening with your horse friends once in a while. But when you know it's getting late, telephone me. You know how I worry. <laughs> it's like being on parole. Gotta check with the warden every hour. <laughs> Those neighbors. Put a stop to that tomorrow. You'll never stop us swingers. So now you're a swinger. What do you think I was doing tonight with my friend? Playing parts easy? Well, I've had enough of it. Tomorrow I take action. Uh, won't help. For every hepcat you crush, another will pick up the bongos and lead the rock and roll to freedom. It's past midnight. Now stop that. You won't be able to sleep tonight. You'll get overexcited. Hey, calm down. Calm down. Oh, Wilbur, I thought you were going next door to ball out the new neighbor for making all that racket last night. Well, I, uh, I hate to start an argument on an empty stomach. He just had a big breakfast. Well, maybe he didn't. Honey, all you have to do is explain to him that you're an architect, you work at home, and all that rock and roll bedlam is disturbing you. You're right. I'm going next door right now and shove a nasty note in his milk bottle. Tiger, I want to sleep tonight. Go and talk to Mr. Carragher now. All right. May as well get it over with. <laughs> Starting a fight hardly seems like a friendly way of greeting a new neighbor. Wilbur, will you please go talk to him? Yeah. How big is he? Not very. Broad shoulders? Is he kind of on the young side? Small, thin, and old, huh? <laughs> oh, kill him.
Kerrigan, either you stop this racket or you move out of the neighborhood. <laughs> <clears throat> What happened? Ah, uh, <coughs> yes, uh, Kerrigan, I'm your neighbor, Wilbur Post. Oh, Tom Kerrigan, a pleasure. How do you do? <laughs> uh. Uh, well, won't you come in, Mr. Post? I certainly will. I've got something very important to talk to you about. I'll come right to the point, Mr. Kerrigan. For the last few nights, you've been keeping us awake with that, uh, that loud and inconsiderate... Uh, Mr. No Post. Uh, may I offer you some fruit? No, thanks. I just had breakfast. The point is, Mr. Kerrigan, we just can't live here with that noise. Now, if necessary, I'll go from house to house and start a neighborhood petition. And I'll be the first one to sign it. <laughs> Help? I'll even go around ringing doorbells. <laughs> uh, please sit down. Thank you. Uh, won't you have some fruit, Mr. Post? No, Mr. Kerrigan, if you don't like rock and roll music, why do you insist on playing it all the time? Well, it isn't me. It's, it's my teenage son. Well, that's no excuse. Do you realize you've kept me awake for three nights for that racket? Oh, you're lucky it's kept me awake for three years. You should control your son. You should have stopped that racket last night at a reasonable hour. Well, unfortunately, Mr. Post, I attended a meeting of my construction company. I'm in the process of building a 60-unit apartment house. Still, it is your responsibility as the... You're building an apartment house? Yes, yeah, the first of several in this area. Oh. Uh, may I have some food? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank, thank you. you. I'll take it. Yeah. You know, by a strange coincidence, uh, neighbor, I happen to be an architect. Well, you should be doing well out here. On my last building, I had to pay my architect over $20,000. <laughs> but, Mr. Post, I, I'm sorry for any annoyance my boy may have caused you people. Oh, forget it. I mean, what's the good of being a teenager if you have to act normal? <laughs> he got $20,000, huh? Yes. Oh, Jeff's really a wonderful boy, but he's spoiled. See, I, I'm a widower. He's an only son. Oh, I understand your problem. I have an only horse. Uh, well, it's, it's rather difficult to control a lively boy like that. Yeah, I have the same problem with Ed. Your son? No, my horse. Uh, well, uh, uh, frankly, Mr. Post, uh, this morning I discussed the problem of noise with my boy. We were discussing the same problem this morning. With your horse? No, my wife. <laughs> I have one of each. <laughs> oh. Look, Mr. Kerrigan, if you would like, I'll talk to your son. I mean, sometimes an outsider can reach them. What have we got to lose, huh? <laughs> oh, uh, Jeff, will you come down a minute, son? Yeah, come on, Dad. Oh, hi. Oh, Jeff, this is our neighbor, Mr. Post. Well, hi, Mr. Post. Oh, Jeff, that's a fine boy you got here, Mr. Kerrigan. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Post has something he wants to tell you. Ah, uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> yes, uh, look, it's about uh, those records you were playing last night. See, I was listening, and uh, they really blasted. Oh, that big beat really flipped you, huh? Right out of bed. Crazy, man. Hey, I like the new neighbor, Dad. Well, we'll see you around, Mr. Post. Yeah. Oh, uh, son. Did you, uh, did you finish your algebra? Oh, Dad, you know I don't dig that algebra jazz. It, it, it doesn't dance, man. It, it just lays there. <sighs> well, I wish he'd spend less time with his music and more time with his algebra. If he flunks it again this term, he won't get into college. Well, now, look, algebra was my best subject at school. It's simple. I'd be very happy to help Jeff out. Oh, Mr. Post, I couldn't impose on... Oh, that's no imposition. It'd be a pleasure. And I don't want you to think I'm doing it just so you'll throw a little business my way. Oh, I wasn't thinking of that. I... Well, think about it. <laughs> I like a man with a sense of humor. All right, can you see Jeff after dinner? Be a pleasure. Well, I certainly appreciate this, Mr. Post. Don't mention it. What are neighbors for? Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hey, 
Ed, what are you doing? Picketing. Why? What are you fighting? Algebra. What have you got against algebra? Well, it doesn't get up and dance. It just lays there. It's stand aside. I have to coach Jeff. Now, you don't want to see that boy drop out of high school, do you? If that's what he wants. Why don't you grown-ups let us teenagers do what we want? All right. All right, Ed. If you won't stand aside, I'll just have to crawl under you. Start crawling. If, if you won't get out of the way, I'll have to use force. Okay. Pick me up and carry me to the barn. You're just sore because I bawled you out for coming in late last night. Nah, that's not true. It's the whole attitude a certain fuddy-duddy has against us teenagers. Are you calling me a fuddy-duddy? If the duddy fits. All right. All right. You can just sit there all night if you want. I'm going around to the front door. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ed? I have only begun to fight. And there is a boy in there waiting for an algebra lesson. Ah, algebra. Where would Elvis Presley be if he wasted his time with algebra? Well, he might have become a college professor. He'd look pretty silly twisting in his black robe. Ed, I am going to get in there. All right. Mr. Kerrigan! Oh, Mr. Kerrigan! There's a horse out here. Please, don't embarrass me in front of the neighbors. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Post. Oh, uh, what's your horse doing here? Oh, he's just making a fool of himself. Come on, Ed, back to the barn. Come on. Well, uh, come on in, Mr. Post. Fuddy duddy. You'll be sorry you said that. Who said what? He knows. Now see, if it takes X three hours to dig a hole that is eight feet square, and it takes Y six hours to dig the same hole, how long will it take X and Y to dig the same hole together? I don't dig. Oh, come on, now, Jeff. Surely you remember the formula I taught you for factoring a trinomial? I forgot. Look, I, I'm just not hip to this stuff. Well, look, I'll give you a hint. It starts with D square. Well, no wonder it bothers me. Man, I, I don't dig squares. Come on, Jeff, let's not kid around. Oh, look, Mr. Post, I, I told you I just can't get with these crazy algebra formulas. They're two way out, man. They. They make me lose my cool. Well, now you concentrate. Just repeat after me. D squared plus 6D plus 9. D squared plus 6D plus 9. Equals D plus 3 times D plus 3. 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 Hey, it really swings, man. Never mind the swinging, please, now. Just concentrate on the, on the whole equation. D squared plus 6D plus 9 equals D plus 3 times D, uh, D, D squared plus 6... D squared plus... D squared plus 6D plus 9 equals D times 3 plus D... D squared... Mr. Pose, mm -hmm. you know your problem? What? You lost the B. Oh, did I? <laughs> You'll kill yourself. Get off that skateboard. Woo! Ed, look out! <sighs> Ed, what are you? Some kind of nut? I was doing great till I tried standing on my head. <sighs> <sighs> Ed, I swear you have flipped. Why? Because I'm acting like a swinging teenager like Jeff? We are not discussing Jeff. Admit it, Wilbur. The only reason you're teaching him is you want a job from his father. That's not true, Ed. Oh, it, it may have started that way, but 
Well, now I, I really like the boy. I want to help him. You're wasting your time. The only one he'll listen to is a fellow swinger. <laughs> How do you like my uh, go-go? Real cool, man. Except for one thing. What's that? Well, there's, um, there's not enough of you going. <laughs> well, what am I doing that's wrong? Well, here, let me show you. Look, we'll start off with the frug. The frug? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's sort of like the twist, only instead of going from side to side, you, you bump and wiggle. Here, let me show you. Shaking dice in your back pocket. All right. Now here, look. This is the monkey. Oh. Here. Now here's the swim. Called the mule. At your age, I'd call it the jackass. <laughs> oh, I, I think I hear my algebra calling me. <laughs> what are you teaching him? Algebra or clam digging? Well, no, no. You see, I was just trying to, to win his confidence. Uh, I figure if I can get Jeff to accept me, well, I'll have better luck with the algebra. Oh, I see. You're sort of twisting your way into the boy's confidence, eh? No, it's not the twist. That's the mule. Yes, it is. Pops, we kids are taking over the world. I 
Come in, boy. Well, what do you think? You too, huh? Oh, it's smart business. If you can't beat him, join him. Look, if you're gonna do it, why don't you do it right? Watch. Huh? I hate to interrupt you too, cats, but uh, I'm trying to sleep. I've got an exam tomorrow. Uh. <clears throat> uh, this younger generation, what a bunch of squares. <laughs> Time did you get in last night? Oh, 11-ish, 12-ish. Maybe one-ish. That's possible, is It's your life. You want to be a rebel teenager, you do what you like. <sighs> cool, man. <clears throat> Mr. Foster, you in there? Yeah, right there, Jeff. Great news, Mr. Post. I got an A in algebra. Oh, cool. How did you remember all the equations? A breeze. I did it with rock and roll. X squared times 3 plus B over B equals 9AG over CD2. Solid! That'll sell a million records. Oh, it sure flipped Dad. Say, uh, that reminds me. He wants to know if you can have lunch with him. Talk about his new building. Cool, cool. Well, we'll see, Mr. Post, and, and thanks a lot for all the help. You're welcome, Jeff. See ya. <laughs> you hear that, Ed? He's got... <laughs> What's the matter, fella? You tired? It's fun being a teenager, but the hours kill you. <laughs>